big protests in support of the Hezbollah chief mourning Hassan Nasrallah. Slogans and banners denouncing Israel and the United States have reverberated through the streets of Kashmir. But are these protests really organic? Is this public anger or has it been stoked? Take a look. Protests erupt in various areas of Srinagar and Budgam districts in Jammu and Kashmir over the killing of Hassan Nasrullah. Demonstrators took to the streets on Monday, chanting anti-Israel and anti-American slogans, holding images of the Hezbollah chief who died in an airstrike in Lebanon on September 27. The Bajrang Dal held counter-protests against the PDP and NC in Jammu, slamming them for backing Nasrullah. Political tensions escalated after PDP chief Mehbooba Mufti cancelled her campaign in solidarity with the people of Palestine and Lebanon over the killing of Nasrallah in Israel. Mufti's daughter Iltija lauded Nasrallah for backing the people of Gaza. Calling the Hezbollah chief Sahab, Iltija Mufti stated that she, just like Nasrallah, is against Israel's policy. But our hearts are heavy. 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 And people here should have the right to protest. If they protest, they will have a problem. They want to protest against the Israeli policy of genocide. How do they go to Lebanon and carpet bombing? There is no wrong thing. The JNK National Conference also expressed solidarity with Nasrallah. जो कल हुआ उसके बाद ऐसा लगता है जैसे पूरे क्षेत्रों में अब जंग के बादल जो हैं नजर आ रहे हैं। हिंदुस्तान की हकुमत को, हिंदुस्तान के वजीरियाजम को, बाकी मुल्कों के लीडरान को इजराइल पर दबाव बनाए रखके वहां दोबारा अमन कायम करने की मुकम्मल कोशिश करनी चाहिए। the Congress chose to distance itself from the controversy. हम बाहर जो देख रहे हैं वो एक लग जो दुनिया का नजरिया है जहाँ जो जो जिसकी फीलिंग है लेकिन एट द सेम टाइम हमें अपनी डेमोक्रेसी को स्ट्रेंथन करके अपने लोगों के लिए आगे बढ़ने की जरूरत है मेरा ख्याल है ऐसी सिचुएशन जो है वो क्रिएट नहीं करनी चाहिए. The BJP questioned the intent of the NC and PDP in rallying behind his Hezbollah. अगर दुनिया भर में कहीं आतंकवाद के खिलाफ कार्रवाई होती है, तो नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस, पीडीपी और कांग्रेस जैसे इस पार्टियां उनके समर्थन में नजर आती हैं। उनको गाजा तो नजर आता है, लेकिन ढाका में हिंदुओं की हत्याएं नजर नहीं आती। ये राजनीतिक दल तुष्टीकरण की राजनीति के चलते-चलते इस तरह से अपनी रैलियों को रद्द भी करते हैं, आतंकवाद का समर्थन भी करते हैं। ये लोकतंत्र के पक्ष में नहीं है, आतंकवाद के समर्थक हैं। Kashmiri pundits joined the chorus, slamming Mufti. इनको कम से कम शर्म आनी चाहिए जो नब्बे में उन्होंने नरसंहार किया है जो गिरजा तिकु का कत्ले आम किया उस तक इन्होंने मुंह तक नहीं खोला उन्होंने उन्होंने जो बंगलादेश में नरसंहार हिंदू के साथ हो उस वक्त इन्होंने मुंह नहीं खोला है मेरी एक रिक्वेस्ट है गवर्नमेंट इंडिया से ऐसे लोगों को चुन के उनको एयरपोर्ट तक पहुंचाइए जहाज से बिठाइए फ्री हम उसका पैसा देंगे उनको वहाँ पोर्ट कर लीजिए the protests by the NC and PDP over Nasrullah's killing come a day ahead of the last phase of voting in JNK. Bureau Report, India Today. And Sunil Ji Bhatt joins me uh, live from Jammu. He's been reporting from all across the state. Sunil, these protests that are taking place, uh, you know, these are obviously political protests happening because there's an election campaign on right now, isn't it? Well, Shiv, uh, ever since uh, Hezbollah chief Nasrullah was eliminated uh, by uh, Israel, since then, uh, protests are being witnessed in many parts of the Kashmir Valley, particularly in the areas where uh, Shia community members live. And now the political parties in the Kashmir Valley are adding fuel to the fire. They are yeah. giving statements that are pro-Hezbollah, whether it's the Mahbubah Mufti or Iltija Mufti or the national conference leaders. They are saying that... Uh, 
uh, that Muslims are being persecuted uh, in um, Lebanon, in Gaza, and Iltija Mufti has even gone on to uh, compare Kashmir with Gaza. So mm. this is being done in view of this last phase of assembly elections, which is going to be crucial when it comes to the final tally, when it comes to the final results, because this phase is going to decide who is going to form government in Jammu and Kashmir. And Shiv, as far as Kashmir Valley is concerned, uh, protests like these are not a, because every time where, when there have been international you know, events or international happenings, yes. Uh, there are segments of people and there are certain groups who, uh, you know, stage protests, they come out on the streets, whether it was the, uh, uh, when Pakistani uh, leader uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was yes. hanged, at that time also there were protests. Then uh, see the irony, Shiv, um, the Pakistani dictator uh, who hanged uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, when he died in an air crash, even that time, protests were witnessed when there yes. were when there was Islamic revolution in Iran and there were political happenings in Azerbaijan. At that point okay. of time, also there were protests. So the, now political parties are adding fuel to the fire because one phase of assembly elections is left, and uh, these political parties want to gain maximum in these elections. Shiv, back to you. All right, Sunil, thanks very much uh, for that uh, for that overview of why these protests have been taking place. Iltija Mufti, the daughter of former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister and PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti, has, among many others in the Kashmir Valley, from the political system there, mourned the death of Hezbollah Chief Hassan Nasrallah, calling out Israel's attacks on Lebanon and Gaza. As the successor of an entrenched political dynasty in Jammu and Kashmir, Iltija's word carries a lot of weight. So it is no surprise that even the Kashmir Valley the situation 3,500 kilometers away from Hezbollah strongholds in southern Lebanon, there have been protests by big crowds. The Kashmir Valley I'm talking about. Now, I've reported on Kashmir for over 20 years, viewer, and I can tell you that organizing a crowd protest is actually no big deal. Even when it's over the death of some faraway personality that common Kashmiris feel really nothing for. But Iltija Mufti, who's fighting the Jammu and Kashmir election from a well-tested family bastion, which she will almost definitely win, and we wish her the best, she's displayed the deepest possible duplicity by invoking and claiming to mourn the death of martyr Hassan Nasrallah of the Hezbollah. Her words go, however, beyond the usual cynical posturing during this election campaign in JNK. They come at a time when Iltija Mufti is making a strenuous effort to carve out an identity for herself that isn't stained by perceptions of being a silver-spooned dynast who, after spending all of her life enjoying the privileges of being a Kashmiri, fully insulated from the true problems facing common Kashmiris, is now ready to claim her legacy by ensuring those problems in Kashmir never actually go away. Iltija Mufti who's had the privilege, despite being a Kashmiri, of studying in Delhi and studying in the United Kingdom as well. For instance, Iltija Mufti's recent remarks comparing the situation in Kashmir to the violence and chaos in Gaza or Lebanon reveal a glaring cynical hypocrisy that I refuse to let go of unchecked. While both regions have experienced conflict, drawing parallels between them today is not only absurd, but deeply irresponsible. It harms the Kashmiri people. Kashmir in recent years, no matter which way you look at it, has witnessed significant improvements in security and development. This is not to say all is perfect, but comparing the situation in Kashmir to Gaza is a huge disservice to the sacrifice of the people of Kashmir and to both regions in general. More importantly, this comparison appears to be less about genuine concern for Kashmiris and more about preserving Iltija's family's dwindling political relevance. For decades, the Mufti family, with their political party, the PDP, have wielded influence in Kashmir by oscillating between a soft separatist rhetoric and aligning with the government at the center. They've portrayed themselves as the voice of the common Kashmiri, but it is becoming increasingly clear that their chief concern is their own political survival. 
the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019, which removed Kashmir's special status, marked a pivotal moment in the region's politics. For Iltija and her family, this change was more than just a political decision. It signified the erosion of their power base. Since 2019, Kashmir has seen a steady return to normalcy with decreased terrorism, decreased militancy, a revived economy, improved infrastructure, record tourism, and criteria across the board that suggest and confirm that things are actually getting better. Schools and businesses that were frequently shut due to strikes and unrest are now functional. Tourism, visitors are picking up, and life is returning to a semblance of peace that has been elusive, violently elusive, for so long. Yet for leaders, young leaders, young promising leaders like Iltuja Mufti, who should know better, this improvement is inconvenient because it undermines the very foundation of their political narrative, their silver-spooned dynastic legacy. The more peaceful and developed Kashmir becomes, the less relevant the Mufti family's rhetoric of victimhood and soft separatism appears. The solution? Tell the people of Kashmir that they actually live in a Gaza-like hell and constantly invoke the memories of terrorists like Burhan Wani so that common Kashmiris who, God forbid, dream of a life of normalcy and prosperity are drawn back into the morass of conflict and anger. That's the easy way out. Nobody should lecture Iltija Mufti or anyone else for claiming to mourn the death of Hassan Nasrallah. As someone who's looked at the Middle Eastern crisis for years, I even did a dissertation on it. I can tell you that there are no blacks and whites between Israel and Hezbollah or Israel and Gaza. These are complicated issues filled with polarizing emotions and nobody can be faulted with having strong views one way or the other. Iltija Mufti is well within her rights to express her views. But it is the reason and the timing for the expression of those views that requires calling out. And that's what I'm doing right now. By equating Kashmir with Gaza, Iltija Mufti is attempting to stoke emotional fires among the Kashmiri people, many of whom have endured decades of instability. Gaza, as we all know, is a region ravaged by warfare, now has blockades, a full-fledged humanitarian crisis, thousands of deaths, including children, on a scale that is entirely different, incomparable to what is happening in Kashmir. Drawing this false, this dangerous equivalence only serves to incite fear and anger, potentially destabilizing the progress that has been made so far. Maybe that is the intention. It is no secret, viewer, that the Mufti family thrived politically in a climate of unrest. The more divided Kashmir was, the more room the Muftis had to maneuver, portraying themselves as mediators between the center and these many separatist factions. But with growing normalcy in Kashmir, the political space for such middle ground players is shrinking. Iltija Mufti's latest comments therefore seem like a desperate attempt to remain relevant by manipulating public sentiment with dangerous exaggerations rather than offering any constructive solutions. Instead of fanning the flames of fear and resentment, leaders like Iltija Mufti, educated, young, supposedly progressive, should be acknowledging the positive changes and working towards furthering them. This is not about the BJP. This is not about the PDP. This is about the people of Kashmir. The people of Kashmir have suffered long enough. They deserve leaders who tell the truth. They deserve leaders who don't make irresponsible statements. They deserve leaders who prioritize stability, peace and development over power games and emotional manipulation. Unfortunately, Iltija Mufti's statements suggest that her family's political fortunes matter more to her than the future of Kashmir and its people. That is the real tragedy.